Remember where God brought you from. Remember therefore. Let me give you a broad, a broader picture. Mm -hmm. As I've said before, there was a prophet, the son of Bullseye. His name was Brother Ezekiel, right. better known as the son of man. That's right. God Almighty told Ezekiel mm -hmm. to make him some bread. bread. Make some bread, Ezekiel, for himself. Mm -hmm. Not for God, but for himself. And he had to make it out of dung. dung. Glory to God. He didn't say have some bread and some dip. He had to make the bread out of the dung from animals and from his. That's right. Eat it as barley cakes. <laughs> I want to show you this. In Read the, this. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 4. And at verse 11, thou shalt also, thou shalt drink also water by measure. Thou shalt do what? Also drink water by measure. Drink water by measure. The sixth part of an hen from time to time shalt thou drink. Yes. And thou shalt eat it as barley cake. Let's see how to make it. And thou shalt bake it with dung. Thou shalt bake it with dung. That cometh out of man in their sight. Yep. Then said I, Ah, Lord God. Wait a minute. Ezekiel's response was what? Ah, Lord God. Ah. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Ah, ah, Lord God. That's right. Uh huh. Amen. All right. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. Now, God ain't like us. No way. You see dung, you don't want no part of it. Mm. Do you? No. You don't want no parts of it. Mm -mm. Yes, God is going to tell a man to make cake. Barley cakes. Barley cakes. <laughs> Lord. Mm -hmm. My Lord. That's a cake, brother. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Listen. And, and thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And what? And thou shalt bake it with dung. Oh, bake it. Bake it. Can you imagine the scent? <laughs> bake it in, in whose presence? With dung that cometh out of man in their sight. I want you to bake it while mm. men is looking at you. Looking at you. My Lord. Hmm. And he had to do what God said. He had to, mm. Don't worry, I'll show you what this means. <laughs> I don't want no one to get overzealous and go run into the bathroom to make a collection. <laughs> That's right. They want to come bringing to me. Pastor Jim, this is what God means? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Oh. <laughs> I'm a big, it's like Ezekiel. Oh. <laughs> Come on, son. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. Thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And thou shalt bake it with dung. Bake it with dung. That cometh out of that man. That come out of man. In their sight. Uh -huh. And the Lord said. And the Lord said. Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. And. Whether I will drive them. Now listen. It is our nature not to mingle in dung. Correct? That's right. All right. Mm. We don't want no parts of it. Mm -hmm. When you smell it, you're like, oh, oh, Jesus. You know, sometimes on these country roads, you can ride by on a nice summer day. Man, like something outside is dead. Yeah. You don't care how hot it is. You crank them windows up. You be like, oh, God. The dung mm. represent past. Mm. All that good food you ate goes through conversion. It changes. So now all them good greens and vegetables, now what you ate in the past becomes the present. Mm. So we reject. We accept our actions of the past. But they have a tendency to come haunt us in the present. That's true. That's true. And even though you enjoyed the actions of the past, 
Now when you're faced with them in the present, yeah. your whole outlook on them is different. different. Because now you realize the stench mm. that they give off. Go ahead, man. Are you listening to the old man? Go record? ahead, go ahead. Man. So you reject the mm. past becoming present. Right. And now you work to dismiss the present. Knowing is a result of your madness in the past. Go ahead, brother. Dung, Dung. is something of the past. Yeah. Out of an enjoyable meal, or is it something in the present from an enjoyable meal of the past? Right. We don't want it. But here you got a farmer. Hmm. He gets the dung. He want it. He want it. He want that fertilizer. That's right. Because he knows nutrients in it. Look at all, all that good corn that's on your table. I want you to think the next time you eat. <laughs> the corn, the greens, the beans, the potatoes, what we reject. Yeah. The farmer he knows. Farmer knows. He mingled in the soil. Drive his tractor through the soil, turning over the earth to mix the nutrients and release the oxygen. Mm. Then he come planting. Yeah. All the present now with the fertilizer. Yeah. What is he doing? Planning for the future. Mm. You have to look at your past dung. Your past life. Right. And see what you presently learn. Mm. And what good you able to learn and abstract from the madness of your past life. Use it in the present mm -hmm. for the betterment of yourself in the future. That's right. Good teaching. Good teaching. When you say I was a sinner. You're saying I was a dung lover. That's right. That's right. Maybe you have to think twice about praising yourself. Mm. Oh, I was a sinner. You was a dung lover. Dung lover. And a dung eater. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when God told the prophet about the barley cakes. Mm -hmm. Eat it. He did what? Thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. Do what with it? Eat it. Eat it. Now, I love the Lord. <laughs> I do. I, I, re I really do love him. You really do. I really do. <laughs> I cannot by any means yeah. honestly, honestly say mm. that if the Lord told me to do this, I'm going to jump on it. No. See, I'm a realist. I'm just simply a real straight up person. Right. A lot of folks say, oh, whatever God said, I will do. All right. Okay. If God told you to take your own dumps on your day of diarrhea. <laughs> put it in an eight ounce glass. Ugh. And for you to get in the kingdom, you got to take it. Oh How many will do it? How many? Now, me personally, I struggle with it. I will struggle with it. Oh, yes. You know when that mother want to give the child those green vegetables, that child fight. <laughs> I struggle with it. Struggling. Stop being so over-righteous. Whatever God say I jump and do, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't know what God may tell you. That's true. And God will challenge you by telling you to do because you opened your mouth. That's right. That's what happened to Abraham, Abraham. and Isaac. Mm -hmm. Ishmael was rejoicing about his circumcision. Isaac said to him, I mean, 
What are you bragging about, a little piece of flesh? A little piece of flesh. So Isaac feels as though that he would exalt himself above his brother and say, hey, if, if, if my father Abraham hmm. offer me before the Lord, oh, Lord. I do it. Mm -hmm. The book of Jasher said the Lord heard it. Heard the word. And it sound good to the Lord. That's right. And God told Abraham, offer up. Offer up thy son. Thy son Isaac. Isaac words because he made a declaration that I will do this and I will do that. If the Lord said something, calls him to be on that altar. You better shut your mouth. That's right. Before you be quick to say, if God told me do this or do that, I do it. Because God may bring it right to your doorstep. That's true. And then if you don't do it, you broke your vow. You better be careful. Be careful. That's truth. You better be careful. That's right. Oh, I have another backslide. All right. If you got enough experience, you can say that. Fine. I will never leave the church over a woman. Mm. And yet a woman got you fighting and cussing other men out? And she ain't even your wife? That's right. Mm. I will never steal. Can you say that if your children hungry? And you can't find nothing to eat? My Lord. Can you say that if your children hungry and your wife is hungry and you can't get nothing else? Can you walk by food and not take it? Something. I will never go to the doctor. Can you take that pain that feel like a thousand Charlie horses? Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. This is real Holy Ghost teaching. Real teaching. Out of one mouth, we thank God for coming into the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. And then out of mercy, when God brings us to it, now he can't find us in it. That's right. Because something else got us our attention and we think of that cheap trash more than God. That's right. He got a beef with you. Yeah. When God, now listen, what the scripture is itemizing, if you're in, mm -hmm. if you're in it, mm -hmm. and God got a beef with you, you're not on good terms with God. Right. I don't care how you and some brother or you and some sister get along, brother. If you ain't on good terms with God, you, listen, you in a bad predicament. Bad predicament. Huh? That's true. 